Hello everybody, it's me, your good friend Sparky, and welcome back to the Wii version of Pikmin. We have made it on time to day number 10. We are in the final trial where the last ship part is waiting for us. But of course, it's not going to be that easy to get to. We have a bit of a uh, puzzle-solving road ahead of us where we need to have all three of our Pikmin types work together in order to get us to where we need to go. We've got water we need to go through, we've got bomb rocks we need to wield, and we have fire that we need to pass. And first, we gotta take our blues over to this area to start building some bridges. Some rather long bridges, but uh, thankfully, it's not too time consuming. As long as it's the first thing you do during the day, you should be good to go. And we also need our yellows while the blues are busy. We need to bring them over this way and have them skip across some uh, very dangerous water, which uh, is not nearly as difficult uh, as it is to do in the GameCube version of the game. In the Wii version, you have this extended throwing range and you can just take care of it, no problem. In fact, I almost actually just threw a yellow Pikmin off the edge because I threw him too far. <laughs> and you gotta be really careful with uh, your bomb rocks here because there are only three of them and you need all three of them in order to make any sort of progress. Uh, and if you're not careful, then uh, you gotta start the day over or come back on another day. But we don't have that option, so we need to make sure that we take care and don't accidentally drop our yellow Pikmin in the water because they'll start drowning and their bomb rocks will disintegrate and we will not be able to actually get the last ship part at all. We also need to start preparing our red guys to uh, make a journey through that path of fire. And uh, at this point, we're just kind of waiting. Yeah, you're able to do this much quicker in the Wii version of the game, so it, even though it's typically not advised to just wait for things to get done in Pikmin, especially if you're going for as few days as possible like I am. Uh, sometimes you just gotta. We are gonna lead our reds over this way, a little ahead of schedule, to uh, get them through the fire so they can push this box out of the way. You just have to try and make sure they don't follow you into the water, so you don't have 40 red Pikmin, like, diving to their dooms. You know what I mean? Uh, because, yeah, they will very easily end up just following you to their almost guaranteed deaths. <laughs> it's, uh, not a good time. Not a good time at all. But with the bridges built, uh, our blue guys have their jobs done, and we need to go grab our reds. Because we're gonna need as much attack power, and, uh, as much firepower, get it, that, as we can muster. Um, yeah, basically, we don't really need the blues past this point. There's not really any point to really having them out. Um, but we definitely still need the yellows because we're going to need to utilize bomb rocks. And uh, we definitely need our red guys because there is a big challenge ahead of us, a big battle to get that last ship part, which we will be seeing in just a moment while carefully leading our Pikmin across the bridge so they don't fall into the water. Just tap the charge button to keep them in a line behind you. And two Pikmin are missing somewhere. I don't know where they are, but it doesn't matter too much on the last day. Oh, they're hiding at the corner. Never mind. <laughs> I know where they are. I know where that is, too. That uh, big, scary-looking thing in the middle there. It's uh, probably not important, but uh, we'll check it out in a second anyway. Thankfully, these gates go down pretty quickly. They are probably the flimsiest gates in the game, as... 
I think they expect you to spend a lot of time here trying to figure things out if you're not familiar with the game. And... You can come back here. You can come back on another day if it's taking you too long to get things done. It's entirely plausible and it's entirely acceptable to do that. Basically, you can clear the way on one day and come back on another in order to actually get the ship part. But we're not gonna do that, because it's time to trigger the final boss fight of Pikmin with the Emperor Bulblax, who is a big old sucker who has a hankering for Pikmin, and if you get too close to him with his tongue, he will very gladly eat an entire squadron of 100 Pikmin. Like, there, there is no question about it. I have definitely had this fight go horribly wrong in that exact way. What we need to feed him instead is bomb rocks. If we feed him a bomb, we stun him briefly, and we can take a moment to attack him. But, however, this is one instance where the GameCube version, I'd say, actually has kind of an advantage over the Wii version. In the Wii version, you are basically... I don't know if there's a way to do it where the Bulblax just eats the bombs and not the Pikmin, but you're basically, from my experience, you have to sacrifice some yellow Pikmin in order to make this fight work. It's not pretty, it's not a fun thing to do, but it is kind of required, uh, unfortunately. He has to eat the bombs in order to get stunned, and in the GameCube version, you do have the mechanic where you can actually have the yellow Pikmin drop the bombs, and so in that case, he would just eat the bombs and not the Pikmin. But, uh, we don't have that luxury in this version, and typically, the Wii version of the battle ends up taking uh, several more casualties than the GameCube version would. And also, if we're not careful, we can very easily get stomped on. He has a habit of jumping when he so feels like it. And I don't know if I'm just unlucky, but it feels like after a certain point of the bombing strategy, he basically stops trying to eat your Pikmin unless he has a lot of them in his sight. and you have to sort of try and time it to his tongue attacks instead. Cause he just stopped. He just stopped trying to eat my Pikmin altogether and just would not stop jumping. And I don't know why. I feel like I've never had that sort of problem before, but yeah. It just stopped working after a while, the whole bombing strategy. I got lucky there, where there just happened to be a yellow in the range, but, you know. But with that, the battle is done, and we've found the final part, the secret safe. And it's as full as ever. How glad I am to have persisted in my search without losing hope. Now I can leave this planet without any regrets. Maybe I'll even stop and pick up some souvenirs for my wife and kids on planet Hogotate. But yeah. The bomb rock strategy, feeding him bombs, it works a lot better in the GameCube version. And there's just... Like, we lost a lot of Pikmin just now. We lost... 21 Pikmin to that fight because of that whole situation. So, the way you end up defeating the Emperor of Blacks works a lot better in the GameCube version. But in the Wii version, too, you can also still take care of the fight a lot quicker because you have the ability to quick-swap your Pikmin. In the GameCube version, you have to keep uh, running out of the arena and dismissing your Pikmin to get him out of the way of harm's way, and then grabbing your bombs, throwing them in, and then uh, whistling back your reds so you can deal damage while he's stunned. And it's just a, its own kind of tedious, but... Either way, we've done it. We have successfully gotten all 30 ship parts. I have finally recovered every ship part. Now I can return home to Hokotate. The dolphin is finally complete in only 10 days. 
Hot dang. This was a task. But it is a task that I am glad I have accomplished. And with that, the day ends automatically. We don't go to sunset on day 10. And we get to see Olimar bid a fond farewell to his new friends. His faithful Pikmin companions who have helped him through this tragic task of trying to survive on a foreign planet. They don't really seem to get the fact that he's waving goodbye and things like that, though. They're a little confused, but it's fine. It's more than fine because we did it. We have accomplished what I didn't necessarily think I could accomplish. But once I got the GameCube version and I finished it in 12 days, and then I went to practice the Wii version and I finished it in 11 days, I figured 10 days was within my skill set. And here we are. Olimar lifts off from the planet, and we get to see several onions of colors we haven't seen before take off after him. There's light blue onions, there's an orange onion in there, there's a green onion. I am kind of hoping that this is kind of some weird way of Nintendo picking out Pikmin colors for future Pikmin games, and we'll get to see some of those colors in Pikmin 4. That would be very nice, actually. It would be a cool way to sort of tie everything back to the first Pikmin game. And with one last look behind him, Olimar leaves the planet of the Pikmin behind. And he's on his way home. Good job, Olimar. Good job. And with that... We get to see our final results. I have a lot more uh, stats here than I do in the GameCube version. We got 30 parts in 10 days, our best. We had 348 surviving Pikmin, which was only the fourth best. And we lost only 124 Pikmin, which was the fewest that I've ever lost in a Pikmin playthrough. Mostly because I only spent 10 days playing the game, I guess. And the total Pikmin between all playthroughs that I've done on the Wii version of Pikmin is 5,646. That's how many Pikmin I've grown ever in Pikmin 1. And you can add that to the GameCube total to uh, sort of increase those numbers. And it just goes to show you, I've played Pikmin 1 on Wii a lot. It is an utterly fantastic game. It really is. Ugh. Oh. And man, it's just, it's nice to see the kind of progress I've made, too. From the fifth place of being 24 days, down to 10. It's just, go for your dreams, kids. Even if it's a weird dream of playing the first Pikmin game. <laughs> and we get to see all of the ship parts, too, from the main engine to the secret safe. Uh, definitely showcasing here the five optional parts, which are the Nova Blaster, Space Float, Massage Machine, UV Lamp, and Secret Safe itself. So, in order to complete the game, technically, you don't actually need to get the final trial. But, at the same time, the game still doesn't really do much to explain which parts are optional. Like, it feels like you wouldn't necessarily need the pilot seat, or even like, the Libra and Sagittarius, and maybe even, I don't know, the Geiger counter to, like, pilot the ship. So I feel like they could have maybe whittled this down to ten optional parts, and it would have made just as much sense. It still would have been a challenge to get all the necessary parts, but, uh, I don't know. Just seems like a bit of a weird decision have the optional parts and then not tell you about them. Well, they tell you about them, but they don't tell you what they are. And that, my friends, brings us to the credits of Pikmin 1 on the Wii. Ah, oh, hi there, Iwata-san. We miss you. The Wii version of Pikmin is 
Well, Pik Pikmin 1 in general, I'd say, is one of my favorite games of all time. Like, there's no question about that. The GameCube version is still a solid experience, but the Wii version is just that much better, I feel. If I am to play Pikmin 1 again at some point, I would usually... I think I would pick the Wii version over the GameCube version, like, nine times out of ten. But it's just... Man. Just the quality of life sort of improvements that the Wii version introduces, it really makes it, like, a whole different ball game. It really does. Just the little things that you don't really think much about and you take advantage for grant... T t take... Take, take for granted, take advantage of in the newer Pikmin games. The ability to quick swap between Pikmin, the not weird bomb rock mechanics, the just extended throwing range and ability to like whistle Pikmin really far away from you. It just all works so well to the Wii's Wii version's advantage. It's... And again, it's not something you even really think about until you play these games back-to-back -back like I just did. And... It really did help a lot. It helped me complete the 10-day challenge I set for myself in much less time, much easier... It was a much easier experience on the Wii version than it was in the GameCube version. And, uh... I feel like if I really tried, I could whittle that down to nine days, but that would probably be my absolute limit. And only on the Wii version, I feel. And lastly, we get to see a little reel of all the enemies in the game, like the armored cannon beetle. This migrant lithopod has developed a stronger ca ca car carapace than its relatives. And our good friend, the beady long legs. Waxy secretions form this creature's distinctive armored shell. The interesting thing about this reel, though, is that it is actually just the same version from the GameCube version. And the bread bug! This creature has a thick hide that protects it from most attackers. Potato bug! Oh god! <laughs> what, am I, what is wrong with me? <laughs> Why did I call it the wrong name? Again. <laughs> burrowing Snagret. The bluish hue of its feathers dis distinguishes it from the Burrowing Snarrow. I blame you, Burrowing Snagret. You're terrible. And yeah. Oh, and the candy pop, bud. Could this be the next step in Pikmin evolution? Like the Pikmin themselves, it has many mysteries. Yeah, if you pay close attention, it still just has the cursor, like target cursor and stuff from the GameCube version, so it's the same uh, movie. And the dwarf bull bear, which is a baby bull bear, which we did not see at all, actually. Ah. Oh. And the dwarf Bulborb. Although similar in appearance to Bulborbs, these belong to a totally different species. Indeed. And this guy that we just fought. The Emperor Bulblax. This massive grub dog buries itself when hunting. Yes, it does. And Olimar, failing at fighting a fiery blowhog with blue Pikmin, this creature expels a combustible phosphor that ignites at moderate temperatures. And the Swooping Snitch Bug, in the Forest of Hope for some reason, definitely wasn't there previously. This is rare species uses its antenna as wings. You can see a lot of weird oddities uh, in this demo reel that aren't in the actual game. Like the Gulix in the Forest Navel. He definitely wasn't there either. A watery gelatinous membrane protects this creature's nervous system. And we did not actually see him at all during the game. Like you... And, uh, oh, the Honey Wisp. This creature collects nectar from the larva waiting in its nest. Like, you can see ship parts where they're not supposed to be, like the extraordinary bolt in the distance there. The Iridescent Flint Beetle! This forager stores undigested pellets in its stomach for winter. And yeah, this is, like, clearly from, like, a beta version of the game, and it's just interesting to see all the differences that are around. Oh, and the Mamuta. It likes flowers, but only for their decorative properties. Oh, and the pearly clam clam, which is actually the clam clamp. I was saying the name wrong. Though beautiful, this mollusk pearls are thin and fragile, and they're also worth 50 Pikmin. Very important detail. The pellet posy. 
This sparsely growing plant is able to crystallize nectar into round pellets that are numbered for no explained reason. Oh, and then there's this jerk. The puff stool. Many consider this walking fungus a delicacy. Also, just a general pain in the butt to take care of, in most cases. Speaking of pain in, pains in the butt, <laughs> the puffy blowhog. Instead of breathing fire, this species uses its hydrogen to float. Just, and just be obnoxious in general. Yeah. The sheer grub. Males of this species are purple and have arm an armored head. And the females are just... They don't do anything, really. They don't do much of anything. The Shearwig! The males of this species are able to fly, but the females remain underground. Neat. And oh boy, it's this guy. This nightmare, the smoky frog. Thought to be a malformed larval mamuta, who actually gives you a golden seed that's worth 100 Pikmin. But he's just generally a pain in the butt to fight, so... The Spotty Bull Bear! This rare subspecies of Bulbarb has a certain indefag... I still, I still cannot read that word. No matter how many times I try to read it, I can't do it. Spotty Bulbarb, this nocturnal hunter feeds mostly on small animals returning to their nests at night. And look, everybody, it's our good friend, the Water Dumple. This aquatic creature is a close relative of the Bulbarb. You'd never know, just by looking at it. We got these guys swimming around, we've seen them a couple times. The Wogpole. This creature appears to be a newborn yellow Wallywog in tadpole form. Never bothered fighting them though. And here's the analog computer in a completely weird place, with the Wallywog. This creature's coloration results from remaining sheltered in its cavernous dwelling. And last but definitely the worst, the yellow Wallywog. After evolution led to the development of its specialized jumping ability, this amphibian actually lost much of its ability to swim. And it sucks. But that brings us to the end. The happy end. We got all 30 ship parts, and we got the best ending possible to the first Pikmin game. Hot dang. What a wild ride. Oh. And that's going to call it for right now. We are not quite done with Pikmin on GameCube or the Wii because we're going to be taking a look at the challenge mode in the upcoming days. So until then, this is your good friend Sparky signing off for now, and I'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.